Hi there. In this short topic video, we're going to do a bit of applied microeconomics and focus on the supply and demand factors affecting the housing market. When people are asked what are the key problems facing the housing market in the UK, uh, typically they say that the biggest problem is affordability. 47% of people in this survey in 2014 replied that house prices were too high. Linked with that, of course, is the difficulty in saving enough money to raise a deposit on a mortgage and also the cost of meeting the mortgage. Other big issues cited in surveys included the lack of social housing and the fact that rents were too high, especially for people who can't afford to buy and then perhaps moving to a rented accommodation for their first job. And crucially, 20% of the people say that not enough new homes are being built. Well, the fact that house prices are too high, of course, is a partly a supply side issue. If Britain, was, if Britain built more homes, house prices probably on average would be lower. Here's a chart showing the average residential house price in the UK from 2011 to 2014. So it's after the end of the recession. In 2011 and 2012, house prices essentially flatlined, just under £180,000. The average residential price in the UK has climbed steadily since. Indeed, in 2015 and 16, house prices continue to grow quite strongly. Here's a chart showing the year-on-year -year house price inflation in a number of cities in the UK in 2014. Very popular cities such as Oxford and Bristol have seen very strong increases in prices, along with London, of course. London affected in particular by an inflow of foreign money into the property market. Aberdeen has grown strongly until recently, partly linked to the uh, expansion of the North Sea oil and gas industry. You can see here that many towns and cities in the UK have seen quite strong house price inflation. So what are the key factors affecting the market demand for homes? Let's focus here on the demand side of the market. Keep in mind that demand is the quantity of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price in a given time period. So the idea of effective demand is particularly important in the housing market. So here are some key demand side factors affecting market demand for property. I suppose the first key one must be the level of real income of potential home buyers. As per capita incomes rise, so the demand for most types of housing goes up. Indeed, housing is widely assumed to have quite a strong positive income elasticity of demand. Second key factor is the cost of servicing housing debt. So assuming that one can get a mortgage, and that's no easy thing these days, the mortgage interest rate is effectively the monthly cost of meeting the terms of the loan. If mortgage interest rates go up, the cost of financing a home loan goes up and reduces the effective disposable income of homeowners. Consumer confidence is also an important macroeconomic indicator which affects sentiment and therefore the demand for property. People become a little bit less optimistic about the economy. In other words, if their animal spirits dampen, they might be tempted to hold back from entering the property market. The rate of economic growth is clearly a, 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 clearly a key driver of housing demand. At times when the economy is growing strongly, when there's general increase in prosperity, we expect to see an overall increase in housing demand. Likewise, too, if the labour market is pretty strong and there are more people in work. So, for example, in the UK in 2016, unemployment is down at 5% of the labour force. And that's quite an important factor sustaining the housing demand in the economy. The price of substitutes is also an important demand side factor. So for most people, the main alternative to buying a home through a mortgage is to rent. If the price of renting increases substantially, that increases the cost of a substitute and therefore may shift some people more into the owner occupied market. Conversely, if the price of renting falls, people may decide not to buy their own home and choose to rent instead. These are the key demand side factors in the market. The supply side, of course, focuses on construction companies, the building industry in general. Housing supply is a flow concept. Quite an important idea, this one. So the housing supply is the flow of properties that are available to buy at a given price in a given time period. And typically, of course, housing supply will be a mix of newly built homes and older property. The housing supply in the economy is affected by 
the conditions of supply. And fundamental to this is the idea of cost. In other words, what does it cost to build and deliver new homes to the marketplace? So costs of production for construction companies are absolutely key to understanding housing supply. It could be, for example, there's an increase in wage rates uh, or perhaps an increase in national insurance contributions, which increases the construction costs. It might be that land becomes more expensive for new housing development or that the cost of components and raw materials used in building property go up. Here it's worth mentioning the importance of the exchange rate. When the exchange rate is strong, the price of imported construction materials goes down and therefore increases supply at a given price. And also one, has, one must think about the costs of achieving planning consent, land clearance and uh, making existing land, so-called brownfield sites, suitable for new housing. So the costs of production are important. So too the actual number of construction companies in the market, in the industry, and also their objectives. For example, a, a construction company that's simply seeking to maximise their profit might actually build fewer homes than a construction company that's looking to grow their market share. Another key supply side factor is the extent to which construction co uh, companies achieve economies of scale. In other words, you take a big housing development with between three and 500 new homes being built, it should be possible to bring down the unit cost of those homes through what is called increasing returns to scale or economies of scale. And check out our YouTube video for a separate topic video on uh, economies of scale. House, housing costs, construction costs also affected by the pace of innovation in the building industry. Perhaps uh, some uh, companies close to the technological frontier can find processes uh, and techniques and new materials which allow them to build more homes more cheaply. The government can Im impact on housing supply. Uh, the taxes and subsidies on building companies will affect costs and crucially of course the government itself, perhaps through local authorities, can be an actual builder, constructor of new homes, for example new social housing developments. So this slide is quite complex lots of text in it, but essentially it's trying to capture for you the key supply side factors that influence the market supply of homes. The key to it is the unit cost of building a new property. So why is it that house prices in the UK have been rising you know, pretty much every year in recent times? Well, partly it's because on the demand side, mortgage interest rates have come down. Mortgage, the average mortgage interest rate is now between 3 and 4%. There's also been significant speculation in the market, particularly from overseas buyers. Uh, one can also add in there, people have been buying second homes and more as part of buy to let. Significant number of increased uh, people have bought homes to renovate and then let out. The high cost of renting is a factor causing people to have to buy. If renting is particularly expensive, becomes a, cl a close substitute becomes a, a very expensive option. Land prices are particularly high, particularly in cities, and crucially on the supply side, it's widely recognised in the UK that we're not building enough new homes to satisfy growing demand. Keep in mind, for example, that our population is growing quite quickly at the moment, partly as a result of strong net inward migration. So house building at the moment in the UK is not rising in line with expected demand. The government has also provided some incentives recently, including the Help to Buy scheme, effectively a subsidy to mortgage payers, and that may also have added to total demand in the market. So house prices are rising in the UK because demand factors are pretty much strong at the moment and there's a chronic lack of supply. Indeed, the lack of supply is shown by the age of the UK housing stock. This chart shows the distribution of the housing stock in the, in, just in England in 2012 by age and by tenure. Look at the yellow section of this. These were homes built before 1919. And in 2012, taking all dwellings, a fifth of homes in the UK were built nearly 100 years ago. Whereas only 14% of homes have been built in the last 25 years. So the UK's housing stock is aging quite rapidly. Indeed, the number of housing completions has, uh, having fallen sharply during the recession, started to rise a little bit, but it's still well below the level it was at in 2007. A key factor in the housing market to think about 
is the low price elasticity of, the, of supply for housing. It tends to be the case, as you can see in the diagram on the right hand side, that when the market demand for houses increases from D1 to D2, it takes a lot of time for those new homes to come onto the market. Supply in the short term, particularly of new housing, is inelastic. And therefore, house prices are determined mainly by demand side factors. So what are the key reasons for a low price elasticity of supply? Essentially, it has to do with the production time frame. Although lots of construction companies are finding cheaper and quicker ways of building homes, it can take actually several years for housing projects to be planned, designed, delivered and completed. Delays in the, ha the housing planning process lie at the heart of much of this. And the elasticity of supply is also affected by limited capacity. So the construction company, for example, may have shortages of stocks of raw materials. And it may also have limited ability to get the workers, the skilled employees that they need. For example, bricklayers and carpenters. So we tend to see in the UK that the elasticity of supply of, ho of homes is fairly inelastic. And that's a key factor keeping house prices high. So this has been a look at some of the demand side and supply side factors affecting the housing market. In a separate topic video, we'll think about intervention in the market and in particular, how could governments increase the supply of homes? Thanks for joining.